In this episode, we will finally learn about the incredibly powerful use effect hook. As you can see, I already have our application up and running using npm start, so let's get to it. First, we have to import our hook. It is a named export, like all of the React hooks, so we have to import it using the curly brackets, so let's do it. We are already importing use state, so here at the top of the app.js file, simply add use effect next to use state. Save, and now we are ready to use the hook. The use effect hook has to be called with at least one argument, and this first argument always has to be a function. So, I will call use effect, and in here, let's pass the function. Let's also add a simple console.log, so we can see when exactly does this function get called. I will type use effect, save, and now if I refresh the application, we can see that it is being called right away. What if we change the state, like this? We can see that it is being called as well. So when exactly does this code run? The answer is after every single completed render of our application. This means that it gets called after the initial render and also whenever we change the state. Now you might wonder, how does this single hook replace a dozen or so class lifecycle methods? There are two more features of the use effect hook we haven't talked about yet. The first is the return value of the past function. The return value should also be a function and it is called the cleanup function. This function gets called whenever the component is removed from the UI, which means before the component unmounts and also if the component renders multiple times, basically before the next use effect call. What does this mean? Let's test it out. I will add our cleanup function as the return value and in this function, let's add another console.log. So just like this and in here, console.log cleanup function save and now we can see that if i reload the application it doesn't get called since there is no cleanup going on if i change the state the function is called before the next use effect the way i like to think about it is that in this case there is always a new instance of use effect on every re-render an old instance gets destroyed and a new one gets created the cleanup function runs just before the old one is destroyed. Now it should make sense to you that the cleanup function will also get called before our component unmounts. I am not going to test that in this tutorial, but if you want to test it yourself, a good idea is to set a local storage value in the cleanup function and then check that value in the next component render. So currently, we can do quite a lot of things using use effect but we still can't, for example, do something after a specific state change. This is where the second argument of use effect comes into play. By default, use effect is called after every component render. It is basically dependent on everything, because it reruns whenever props or state changes. We can use the second argument to specify an array of dependencies. Let's start by testing what happens if we pass an empty array meaning our use effect won't be dependent on anything. So I will pass an empty array right here, save, and if I reload the application, we can see that it gets called on the initial render. But whenever I change the state, nothing happens. The cleanup function will also only get called once and that is before the component unmounts. This way, you can reproduce the old component did mount and component will unmount method functionality. Now, let's see what happens if we add a state dependency. Let's use our state value, which is basically a counter value. Save. And actually, let's also log that value to the screen. So I will add console.log state value. Save. And now let's test it. I will reload. Here is use effect and whenever I change the state, it gets called again. So now we have an use effect that will not only run on the initial render, but also whenever the state value changes. I am going to change the console.log to say state value has changed to and state value. Save. And now state value has changed to 1 because it is initialized to 1. 
I change it to zero and it is changed to zero. With the correct combination of use state and use effect hooks, we are now able to access basically the full component lifecycle. Use effect is a fantastic place for subscriptions, timers, logging, mutations, and much more. You might run into some problems while using it, I certainly did, but I encourage you to simply think about what is going on behind the scenes, when is what function being called, and so on. And that's all for this episode. In the next one, we will learn about the use context hook. If you have any suggestions or questions, let me know in the comments and I'll answer every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.